Welcome to the Planet of NY Sports, where we talk Yankees, Mets, Giants, Jets, and a little bit of the Knicks and Nets. All right, hi everyone. I did, I did, I did say I would give Jaden the intro if the Chiefs did win the Super Bowl. And the Chiefs, congratulations! The Chiefs are the 2023 Super Bowl champions. Jaden, give me your instant reaction to the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. Uh, the reaction was excitement. Um, it was like very exciting to see that that field goal kick. And to see that we won that, you know, even though, you know, we could talk about the controversy with the call and this and that. It was so exciting because, you know, everybody talked down on us, telling us that we're going to lose. We were supposed to lose to the Bengals. We are supposed to lose in the Super Bowl to the Eagles. We are supposed to lose to this team and that team. And we made it through the whole season. Um, you know, we didn't make it through the whole season healthy. But this this really made me happy to see that even though we got rid of our star player, we were still able to come back and win the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so you did bring up the controversial call, and I like we can get into that real quick. So, um, Thomas, how did you feel about that holding penalty? Well, I mean, you saw my initial reaction when it happened. It was kind of just a more upset feeling that we kind of got robbed from watching what could have possibly made it the greatest Super Bowl of the current generation of them. Uh it's a close call usually. It just sucks it happened in the Super Bowl. Yeah, now, Thomas, real quick here, can I just get, like, a little intro of the teams you root for? Uh, so I am a diehard Pittsburgh fan, so Steelers, uh, Penguins, Panthers for college teams, uh, and the Pirates. Um, yeah. How about basketball? Is there anyone you would follow? I don't really watch. I don't follow basketball don't follow much. Basketball? Okay. Nah. You know, <clears throat> three, three, one, three, 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 one. But um, <laughs> anyway, anyways, um, so just going on that holding call, um, Jaden, you go. You, you go. I'll give my um, after. It was the right call. Um, Everybody's like, oh, it's the wrong call. They should have played it. Let it play through. Let's see what happens. But it's one of those big games. You can't just let this call and let it go and just be like, oh, well, it's not that big of a deal. It's just he just hold held him because that's like one of those plays you can't get back. You're like, OK, so if he did make this catch or if he did get the ball, you know, in his hands and made the first down, what would have happened? You know, where they scored, where they got a field goal, where they ran out of the clock and got a field goal. It's all these different things that would have went in your head, um, including like. With this call, it's like I understand where people are coming from. Uh, let's say let it play through because you want to see the Eagles, see what the Eagles are going to do. But at the end of the day, the Eagles would have scored and the game would have been over. Let's be real because the Chiefs only had two defensive stops the whole game. So depending on what I, what happened without that call, it's, it's very interesting. Um, so, Thomas, you were shaking your head. Do you disagree with that take? Um, I mean, looking back at the play, it was <laughs> never really meant to go for a touchdown. Uh, even after, or even before the uh, call, Gigi was never open enough for it to happen. Um, and Mahomes overthrew him. It was it wasn't even close. It wasn't within a single yard. It wasn't enough for a holding call to hold him back. It was just he kind of threw it out of bounds to say. Um, so I would argue they would have kicked the field goal even if that call wasn't made. And yeah, that would leave the Eagles some time, but at the same time, the Chiefs defense had kind of, I wouldn't say blocked them down the second half, but they definitely hindered them throughout it uh, with, I believe, both stops coming in that second half. No, just the one, but it was also a bigger one. It was a three and out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to agree with both of you in certain ways. Um, like, so like with what Thomas said, I do, I, I, I agree. I wanted to see overtime or like a possible, like, you know, more dramatic situation happen. That's just me. But, you know, I feel like it was very ticky tack, but I do agree with Jaden in the sense that it was the right call. And like, you know, if that call wasn't made, you know, maybe you're looking at, oh, people arguing about that. So there probably would have been a debate about this either way. But it now if they didn't make the call, I don't know if there would have been as much as a, you know, a, a debate. But, eh, you know, you, you never know. NFL fans are very picky and there's always going to be an argument about almost everything. But still, I think just in that moment, though, you know, when you look at 
past, you know, playoff games and like, you know, just past games, period. Usually they let the guys, usually they let the guys play it out. Um, you know, was it holding? Yeah, Bradbury admitted it. So we know that. But, you know, you if you want to make the argument of like they have let that go and like, you know, games pass. Yeah, like that is definitely fair. But, you know, can you make the argument of, yeah, was that the right call? And there probably would have been a debate either way. Yes, there is an argument there. So there probably would have been complaints from either side, no matter what would have happened. I do agree with both of you and partly disagree with both of you. It's it's just like a very tricky spot for, you know, so it's like, you know, it's just this time they decided to call it. Oh, well, but, you know, it's, it's very ticky tack. I will admit that. But. You know, so do you guys have any um, closing thoughts on just this holding call? Um, not really. No, I don't think I have anything else to say. I think I, I said anything I, I had to say. So after the game, I had talked to Avi about this, but I feel like the fans have currently had like a really big uh, hold on the refs. Uh, whether they're calling something or not, obviously you had the whole St. Louis thing in the playoffs a couple of years ago. Uh but, or not St. Louis, you, you know what I meant. Um, but at the same time, the fans are also contributing to bad calls. Like, uh, that entire NFC uh, East division was rooting for that type of thing to happen. Uh, they didn't want to see the Eagles get a chance. And I feel like that same kind of thing will be heard and more and more refs will start to kind of take that as a good call uh, in that sort of situation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so now real quick here, I want to move to Patrick Mahomes, the best player in the league. I don't really think there is an argument there. He, he is. I don't, you know, me personally, I have Chiefs fatigue. I don't, I like Patrick Mahomes. I don't, you know, all the commercials, all the Patrick Mahomes this and people already putting him, you know, top five of all time in terms of quarterbacks. Uh, like, I think we need to, I think we need to slow it down a little. We need to slow it down. I do think he will get there, though. I, I, I definitely, I think he will. But you know, to say that now, like, let, like, let's calm down. Like, um, you know, on ESPN today, like, there's already people, you know, on first take. Oh, you know, is Patrick Mahomes a top five quarterback of all time? Like, Dan Orlovsky has him at two, two. Under, under Tom Brady, this is this is getting a little out of hand here. But but the guy, I will give him his due. When you looked at it, the Chiefs, their weapons, it was you know, in terms of health, it was it was not good. It, it wasn't good throughout the year. There was guys getting hurt all over the place for the Chiefs. Um, but you know, when you look at it, you know, like a seventh round running back, you know, the the receivers that they have. They, he doesn't have Tyreek Hill anymore, you know. Juju, Juju, like you know, <laughs> Valdez Scantling, like like let's like you know those receivers, like working with them through the seat, like you know, hey, you gotta give you gotta give the man his due. You 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 have to, you know. Jalen Hurts, he also balled out, but I just wanted to say that, like you know, Jalen Hurts, he has like the best center in the game, probably. He has you know probably the best old line, you know, great weapons all around. And then when you look at what Mahomes did, it's very impressive. So, Jaden, let me get your uh, take on Mahomes. Um, he came out there. He, he's a dog, bro. He came out there and balled. He's a dog. Um, first half wasn't the best half for him. He got injured on that um, scramble and play. I thought the game was over. I'm not going to lie to you. I really did think the game was over. Um, but then he came out there, second half, balled out, uh, put his team up, won a game. You know, um, we we can we can't say he's a top five quarterback of all time, but he's definitely a Hall of Fame quarterback. There's no quarterback in the lead right now that's new one. It's Tom Brady for Tyre. We can't say Tom Brady. Aaron Rodgers, he's not making this far in, in the playoffs. So it, it was amazing to see. You know, you don't really see that from a lot of quarterbacks nowadays. Um, it was amazing to see him come back, lead his team to a Super Bowl win. You know, and all odds were against him. You know. Everybody's like, well, the Eagles defense this and the Eagles offense and all this going into the game. And he came out there and balled. You know, um, we can say, you know, he doesn't have the weapons, but I feel like Isaiah Pacheco is a franchise running back. And I'm, I'm sticking to that. I am sticking to that. You can look back at the other video. I am sticking to that. But, um, 
you know, he has Isaiah Pacheco. I feel like Isaiah Pacheco really opened it up for Patrick. And, you know, going back, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to a little bit um, into Pacheco here, but Pacheco really led Patrick to the, you know, game-winning drives and all that with the running style, the running game and all that. But Patrick did hold his own at the end of the day. You know, he did a lot of that on his own, you know, making them plays, stay, making them plays stay alive and all that. So it was great to see from him, including on a, on a hurt angle like that. It's it's amazing. Um, Thomas, what's your take on Patrick? Uh, so Mahomes definitely did play well, um, especially with what he had. Obviously, he still had Kelsey, but I mean, when Juju Smith-Schuster and Justin Watson are your top two receivers, that's kind of a rough thing to work with, but he made it work. Um, but Jaden brought up the run game, and I I would say that's really what kind of won them the game. I mean, 158 total yards rushing, Mahomes 6 for 44, uh, Isaiah was 15 of, uh, for 76. So uh, all three of their uh, – all four of the people who ran in that game had over four yards per carry. So it was definitely – what kind of led them to the point where Mahomes was able to get those touchdowns. Obviously the final two really meant the most in that situation. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now moving over to uh, the city of brotherly love in Philadelphia. Your favorite team, Roderick. I mean, <laughs> oh, but, I mean, Roderick, you know, I mean, but you know, Vikings, but still <laughs> real quick here. Let's talk about Jalen Hurts' performance. So, um, Thomas, I'll go to you first here. How did you feel about Jalen Hurts' performance? I mean, Jalen balled out. I mean, 304 yards passing. Uh, he set the record for uh, rushing yards by a quarterback in the Super Bowl. He tied the rushing touchdowns record. So he definitely played out of his mind. It was just the one mistake that really – kind of led to the downfall of the entire Eagles offense for the second half. Yeah, um so Jaden, like how do you feel about uh Hertz's performance this game? Um he balled out. He's a, he's a dog. Oh my god, Jalen Hurts. I feel like this is one thing I will take away from that game. He put his team on his back. But going to this game, um Patrick Mahomes did say one thing that did really stick with me. He said that I need to rely on my teammates. Um, he did say that in a press conference before the game even was played. I felt like Jalen really didn't rely on his teammates in this game. That's what really lost him the game. If you look back, Jalen Hurts was really running the ball a lot. Um, you know, four from one, they're going for the QB sneak. Um, there's nobody open down the field. He's he's, he's taking off. He's not trusting his, his receivers. So he did ball out. He did do his best. He He did, you know, break this and break that. But at the end of the day, he didn't trust his teammates to get him the win. He really trusted himself. Um, one thing about the game I feel like that was amazing to see is that he was um, able to, like, you know, going – I don't know if this is true or not, but I think he had, like, a shoulder injury or something with his shoulder, and he was still running the ball, and that was amazing to see. So that just shows his toughness and how hard he, he really wanted, you know, to win that game and how hard he fought for that. So – it. I mean, he, he balled out. That's all I can really say. It's just that he didn't really trust his teammates in that situation in the game. That's all you can really say. Okay. Um, you know, when you – when like, before, like, you know, when you said he didn't trust his teammates, like, you know, I was going to bring up, like, the deep balls and – pause. But, um, you know, like, the deep passes and stuff. But, you know, you, you did say, like, in that part of the game, which I do agree, you know. And we can we can talk about the fumble real quick. Um how, what, how did you guys feel, like, you know, about that fumble and the impact on this game? Um, That fumble wasn't really a big impact on the game, I feel like. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Because at the end of the day, they could have came back the next drive and scored, but they didn't. So yeah. this really just puts you into, into thinking, like, well, was this really, like, his fault or was it really him not relying on his team? Because – we're not going to sit here and say the Eagles head coach, um, Nick Sirianni, was, like, dumb or something, like, by giving him the ball. I mean, that's Jalen Hurts giving the ball. He's going to do what he got to do. But this is a crucial play. Um, looking back at it, you know, they should have probably passed the ball, gave the ball off to Miles Sanders or Boston Scott or whoever, but they didn't. They let Jalen Hurts keep the ball in his hands. So 
I don't think it's really crucial, but I think it's a big impact on the game. Yeah, because uh, you know they still had the Chiefs still had another stop on them the next drive. So I don't really think this would have really be a big impact. I would say. Thomas, what's your take? Um, so obviously the fumble tied the game up on a drive that not necessarily would have gone for six, but could have. Um, actually, just to kind of correct what Jaden said, the Eagles did come out and score the next drive. They did score a touchdown that next drive. But at the same point, they could have been up 14 instead of being up only seven at that point in the game. Did, uh, sorry to cut you off. They did score? I thought yeah. They, uh... But they got held next, next No. Uh, so it was a fumble touchdown. It was a touchdown drive by the Eagles. The Chiefs punted, and then it was a field goal for the Eagles, and okay. that ended the half. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but still, I think that, well, not fully shifting the momentum, it kind of led to that point where the Chiefs were able to have some, some sort of confidence uh, not only in the defense, but in the offense for the first drive of the second half where they came out immediately scored a touchdown and then the defense only gave up a field goal the next drive and that made it a one score game where they scored another touchdown on the following drive okay um so i don't think it had that big of an impact on the game and then you know there are some people you know saying like his performance had to do you know he, this was the reason, like, they lost the game, which I disagree. I don't think this was the reason they lost the game. You know, the main reason why they lost the game was their defense in the second half. I, like, I don't even think that's debatable. Their defense in the second half was awful. Like, it, it, just, it was awful. And especially seeing Mahomes hurt, you know, basically limping, limping to the locker room. And then he comes out there, and then your defense just basically, you know, throws up all over themselves like Donovan McNabb did against uh, Tom Brady. But, you know, it, it was it was not – their defense – Thomas, how do you feel about the Eagles' defense in the second half? Uh, it was very disappointing. I mean, going into the game, number one defense in the league uh, for pressure, they didn't get any of it uh, during the game. Um, no sacks. I think there were only like one or two QB hits throughout the entirety of it. And it was just really disappointing to see this defensive line and even their linebackers who had dominated throughout the entire season, even throughout some of the playoffs, um, just do nothing that entire game and kind of get eaten up by that Chiefs O line. Um, and then, oh, oh, go ahead. Uh, and then obviously you have the safeties and corners that just – fell for the simplest tricks. Um, those last few touchdowns for the Chiefs, it was the same thing they fell for. It was um, motion in and then motion back out, and both times the Eagles bit on that. Go ahead, Jane. Um, I was watching um, a TikTok uh, recently. I think it was today. Um, I think it was week four, the Eagles versus the Jaguars, right? Um you know, you know, um, who's the who's his name again? The, the one for the Jaguars. Is his name the coach? Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson. Yeah, Doug Peterson. Um, he figured out a way to pl how to get the man coverage to move and how to make you know open open receivers in the red zone. So basically, um, the Chiefs basically stole that concept with the motion. So you basically would they would basically motion receiver, and then put him back and he'll be wide open because they're dropping the safety, the safety dropping down and the corners coming in. So it was just, it was just smart. I mean, it was just the Eagles fault at that point because the Eagles didn't change nothing. They stuck with the same defense the whole year. If they changed that one part of their defense in the red zone, they would have probably won a game, but not like changing that at all was, was a big factor. I feel like they weren't prepared at all for that. So if I can just step in real quick. Um, yeah. The Eagles did change something in the red zone, both drives. Um, they had been playing zone almost the entire game, even with the two best uh, man cor uh, corners. And then 
they started getting towards the end of the game, that's where they started playing Nan, and those beater plays work even better than zone beater plays, and that's where you're able to pull that motion, trick him into thinking someone's covering him, and then he's wide open. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say too much on that because you both like did a really good job there. But you know, just looking at the Eagles' defense, you know, I feel like it's just something of okay, you know, they sh- you you have something that was working. It was working because you were in the lead in the first half, and then you stray away. You stray away from that, and then you know, it was. You know, you can you argue going man in that situation was needed? Probably get well, like you know, you can make a you can make an argument either way. Um, because you know, when you got Patrick when you're going up against Patrick Mahomes and that arm, and it's like, you know, and and Kelsey, man. Let, let's just talk about Kelsey real quick too. I wanna bring Kelsey up. Um, Jaden, like uh, can you just explain to us how Kelsey is literally always open? Well, um, he might as well be the new Waffle House. No offense to Julio Jones. Um, but I don't know to say. Like, watching this game, there's no way he should have been open. They have – the Eagles have some uh, great great guys that play great man coverage. So, it was kind of, you know, weird to see that he was open there. And I don't know. I, I just feel like Kelsey's just one of those guys that he's going to find a way to get open no matter what because he's just – he's been doing it so long, including that – before he even was a tight end, he was a quarterback. So he knows the ins and out of getting open in, you know, zone coverage, man coverage, no matter what. So he'll just know what to do. It's all about instinct for him. So, I mean, just great tight end. Greatest of all time right there. Greatest of all time. Um, Thomas, do you think Travis Kelsey is the greatest tight end ever? I would not say that just yet. Uh, he's still got – a little bit of work to do to get there. He's definitely up there for good tight ends, but just to kind of add on, he kind of, he was the zone beater the entire game. Um, When the Eagles ran zone, they had no one covering him, and that's how he found his way open, and that's why he led the team in receiving yards. Uh, Even without having the most receptions on the team, because Juju had more, he was able to get bigger plays in that zone coverage and just basically be untouched for 10 to 15 yards. The one I, I want to bring up that, that one thing we have to give Juju his flowers because he really did make a big impact in this game going down into the last drive and all that by scoring and, you know, helping his team score. But it was really interesting to see how he was a big role player in this game with all the catches he had not a lot of receptions, but he really did make a big impact in this game. Yeah, um, for sure. So if I had to, I think I would say Travis Kelsey is definitely a top five tight end of all time. I wouldn't say he's the best. I don't know if I'd, I'd put him at, what, like like three, three, four, somewhere. Yeah, I'd put him around three, four. Three or four. I don't. I still want to put him over Gronk, and then I, I don't think I would put him over uh, Tony Gonzalez. I don't think I would put him over him. Um, you know, I think at the end of Kelsey's career, I think he will definitely be in the top two. I would say that. I would definitely say that. Um, you know, you can look at like the blocking and stuff, like which is why, like when you look at Gronk too. Gronk, Gronk, you know, was a better blocker than Kelsey. Kelsey's blocking, um, you know, Thomas, like, what do you think about uh, Kelsey's blocking? I mean, it's obviously been a big thing with Travis throughout his entire career, but I feel like this year he finally kind of stepped up to the blocking role, uh, even with the limited amount of times he was in there, because I know throughout the game we saw him get taken off the field during uh, – run plays but yeah Jordy he was just, would come in there more and block yeah. more than he would yeah yeah but he was just throughout the season he's just been kind of getting better and better at actually providing big time blocks and leaving those gaps open for other people um yeah for sure and like like if he can do if he can do that for basically 
two, three, you know, two more seasons, three more seasons, then I definitely will like put him, you know, maybe as the greatest ever. Um, so you, do you guys have any closing thoughts here? Nope. Just had to say that, you know, appreciate all the haters um, going against us, um, all the odds, all the ups and downs. I loved it. My team won the Super Bowl again without Tyree Kill. And that's all I have to say. Thomas, any um, I'll say congratulations, Chiefs. They played well enough in that second half that they came back from the, what was it, uh, the three-point gap and or not even the 10 point gap, I should say. Um, Juju got a ring. Um, I'm sure you love to hear Kadarius Tony got a ring. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, they fought hard throughout the entire game, and the Eagles defense didn't. Uh, Russell's going to be going through that for the next year. Like I don't, I don't care. Like I, I'm just mad that we didn't send him to Chicago. That's where we should have sent him. <laughs> Gosh, the guy had attitude issues here. He didn't, you know, he, he had his injury and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, you know. Gosh, I'm so hey, we're, we're, we're going to make a video on the Giants and the Jets soon, so we'll talk about that in the next one. Yeah, we will be doing a Giants and Jets season review now that the season is over, and we will be gearing up for some baseball season and playoff basketball eventually. So, Thomas, you you don't have to worry about baseball season because, well, you know, your team is going to be out of it. Yeah, your team's going to be out of it by May. No, not yeah. even May, April. Not even so, May. You know, um, if you can all do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.